Hey everyone, JT here, back with another video. Today, I want to talk about a mistake that some people make when planning their hybrid solar and battery solution. One of the most common mistakes made is the installation of a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. If you avoid this mistake, you can save yourself thousands in the long run. Want to know more? Then stick around. First, let's talk about why so many people end up with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. Lots of people I talk to, this seems to be a default. And the real reason is it comes down to paperwork and approvals required for installation. Installers must submit documentation to the distribution network operator, otherwise known as the DNO. These are the people responsible for running the power grid in your area. Inverters of 3.6 kilowatts or less just require a simple notification, it's a quick form, it's inexpensive and straightforward for the installer. But anything larger, they need to go through a more involved process called the G99 approval process. This process is more complicated, requires more forms, it costs more money and it takes a lot more time. And it requires approval before the installation starts. So this is why a lot of installers convince their customers to go with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter because it's easier for them, it means they can get the job done and ultimately they can get paid. But you might gotta ask, is this the right solution for you or is it the right solution for the installer? Let me explain why I think 3.6 kilowatt inverters are a bad idea. The vast majority of installations these days are hybrid solar and battery setups. That means that the batteries are behind the inverter and they accept DC input from your solar panels. This is much more efficient because it means you don't have to convert the energy that's coming off the roof to store it in the batteries. However, this also means that for the power in your batteries to be supplied to your home, it must pass through the inverter to be converted to AC electricity. A 3.6 kilowatt inverter creates a bottleneck. Let me give you an example. I used to have two batteries. Each were capable of delivering five kilowatts max power. So five kilowatts each, a total of 10. But because my installer had put in a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, the maximum power I could supply to my home at any time was 3.6 kilowatts. Now this becomes a real issue when you're using high powered appliances. Now I'm not talking about anything strange here, I'm talking about your oven. If you have a standard double oven, like a lot of UK homes do, you could be drawing 3.6 kilowatts just from the oven alone. Adding in any other devices, like a microwave, a kettle, an air fryer, all of these would draw extra energy, and because the inverter wouldn't be able to supply them, you'd have to draw that power from the grid even though you've got capacity sitting there in your batteries. Another problem with small inverters is their inability to take advantage of low cost or free energy periods from your supplier. Let's say you can access a cheap tariff such as Octopus Cozy, where in the middle of the day you get a two hour period of free or low cost energy. A 3.6 kilowatt inverter can only charge your batteries at 3.6 kilowatts. So over that two hour period, you're gonna get about 7.2 kilowatt hours from that cheap slot. But with a larger inverter, say a 10 kilowatt inverter, you could store nearly 20 kilowatt hours or more if you've got more battery space. You can maximize the savings in these cheap or sometimes free periods from your energy provider. But your 3.6 kilowatt inverter is slowing it down. Finally, think about the future. Your energy needs today might be manageable with a small inverter. But what about five years from now? Are you planning to install a heat pump? They use quite a bit of energy, especially in the winter. When running it on the cheap or free energy stored in your batteries, it can cost you almost nothing. And it will certainly help with the payback period for the heat pump, reducing it down to just a couple of years. So here's the bottom line. Don't let your installer talk you into a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. Instead, get the largest one you can afford that aligns with your future plans. I made this mistake a couple of years ago. I installed a 3.6 kilowatt inverter and I ended up pulling it out later and installing a 10 kilowatt version. 
The price difference between the two was relatively small. I think it was in the region of about £1,000. But the retrofit electrical work to go from 3.6 kilowatts to 10 kilowatts later cost me an additional £4,000. Investing in the right inverter from the start isn't just a better solution, it's a smarter investment for your future energy needs. If you are planning to get a solar and battery installation in the next couple of years, please don't let your installer push you towards a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. Even if you're only installing three to four kilowatts of panels on the roof, having a larger inverter will allow you to take advantage of those low cost or free energy periods. I hope this has been useful. If it has, I'd love you if you could leave a like and subscribe down below. I'll be back soon with another video. If I'm lucky, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.